Hello. Hello, this is Jacob from the scalability team. Um, I want to give a quick demo of uh, a proof of concept merge request I'm working on for GitLab pages. So uh, to serve file from fi to serve pages from object storage. And I want to start with a demo of what is in the merge request right now and what it can do. And then after that, I will briefly discuss the code and how it all works. So um, right now I have uh, a localhost deployment of GitLab and I have a CI job that um, creates a pages site. And I have pages running from the master branch. Let's just double check that. Um, so let's run make. So this should be GitLab pages from the master branch. And then here I can load my page, uh, my site. And uh, this is the documentation site for Puma. Um, that's a little bit random, but I needed some something I could click around in. And uh, generating this documentation site seemed like a reasonable way to have something to click around in. So this is not about Puma, but Puma is our, uh, is our guinea pig. So this is how pages how it works today, um, and this is serving files from disk. We can see them if I run a find command and I look for GitLab shared pages. Then we can see that uh, these are the files that make up this site. So um, great, that's how things work now. Uh, the idea of object storage is that we can run pages without having a local disk with the files on them. So let's look at that now. Um, for that, I need to change branches. Uh, yes. Um, and I need to cheat a little bit uh, because I'm going to apply a little patch. Uh, that has to do with the Pages API that is not about object storage stuff and it's just hard to configure. I couldn't figure out how to get this working unless I just modified the code so that it always uses the Pages API. Um, but this is not in the merge request because it doesn't belong there. So uh, let's compile that and restart GitLab Pages. And now the first thing we see is that, uh oh, what did I just do? Why is it not working? It's gone. Um, I was going to say, we see that it's still there, but I accidentally turned on object storage before deploying to object storage. So let me turn that off. This environment variable uh, controls whether my branch uses object storage or not. So now I've commented out the environment variable and I can restart GitLab pages. This would not happen for in real life because people would not have that environment variable. I just have it because I'm constantly going back and forth. So here we are, pages works the way it used to work. Um, and it's still reading files from disk. And this is actually one of the points uh, is that everything, um, like an, an existing deployment will keep working. But now let's uh, use object storage. And for that, uh, I need to have the zip file of this thing, of this uh, deployment. And normally, Sidekick takes that zip file and does something with it, but I didn't modify Sidekick, so I'm just going to manually download this zip file. And it's called Artifacts 1. Um, and here I have an object storage bucket on Google Cloud. And this is in a European region. I'm recording this in Europe, so this is going to be relatively fast, but it is, it's definitely not localhost. And I'm going to upload to this, uh, to this bucket. And again, I need to cheat a little bit. If we look here, we see that the site used to be in root test pages too. Um, and I need to use that information and look for my upload commands. I have a, oh, come on, upload. I've made an upload command that's part of the merge request that can take a zip file and, um, 
can I do this right now? What is going on here? Okay, the, it's that one that the browser added. I need to say space, there we go, artifacts1.zip. I'm going to upload this file to my test bucket and I'm saying to the uploader that I only want the public directory and that everything should go in the root test pages to prefix on the bucket. So um, I hit enter on this, this takes a moment. And now it's done. And if I reload the bucket, then we see that there is a root folder, test pages to public, and then there's a bunch of files. So this is now a deployment of the uh, same site we had before, except to object storage. Now for, uh, we wanna know that if we reload the page here, we actually get uh, the data from object storage. So to make sure of that, I'm going to just rmrf uh, all that data. So now if I reload, I get a 404. That's expected because um, pages is still running from disk and I just deleted all the files from disk. So uh, that would normally be bad, but I put the files in object storage. So now I turn on the environment variable that tells pages to use object storage and I restart pages and now it takes a moment, but here we go, the site is back. You can see it's a little slower, but uh, it's actually pretty fast if you click something twice. And that's because uh, there's caching going on of uh, metadata. So if pages has the metadata in memory already, then uh, page loads fast. But if something is not in memory yet, then it has to do a bit more work. Uh, that was actually still pretty fast. So yeah. Uh, I'm now browsing object storage because um, as I showed you, if we look at find, there is nothing on disk anymore, but the site is still there. So uh, I took a site that was deployed on disk. I got its zip file. I uploaded the zip file to object storage with a command line tool, the GitLab pages storage commands that is part of the merge request. Then I changed an environment variable on the pages process and restarted it. And now I can browse this site again. And I think that concludes the part where I show that it works. Um, so let's look at the merge request for a moment. What's going on in this merge request? So uh, it's, it looks quite, quite big, it's a thousand lines, uh, but let's, uh, there's a couple of things uh, that shouldn't count, <laughs> or that, uh, that we need to know what they are. So first of all, uh, 260 lines are go sum uh, data. So that's like gem file log. Um, that is uh, information about dependencies. This change is pulling in libraries that can talk to AWS S3, uh, sorry, AWS S3, uh, Azure Blob Storage and Google Cloud Storage. So that is a lot of library code. Uh, so that's how you get those 260 lines there on the dependency metadata. Um, there is, um, yeah, this, this file is interesting. I should, sorry, I should go from a different direction. Uh, what I realized when working on this is that handling symlinks is uh, hard because um, it's, it's just complicated. And I started looking at how it works today and I realized that there is one line where the magic happens with the symlinks. And that is in the, um, the internal serving disk reader go file. And in that one line here, we call into the go standard library and we call something called file path eval symlinks. So I was wondering how does file path eval symlinks do its magic? And I started looking at its code and I realized that it only needs to do two things to talk to the file system. It needs um, LSTAT and readlink. And then I started looking around the rest of the existing code for serving files. And I realized that that 
only uses LSTAT and it opens files. So by looking at the symlinks and how symlink handling works, I realized we only do three things with the file system. And I put them here in our Go interface. Um, let me collapse that comment. We can look up the attributes of, a, of an entry, which may be a symlink. If it's a symlink, we can read where, what it points to. And if it's a file, we want to be able to open the file and read its contents. That's all we do with the file system. And once I realized that, I thought, okay, maybe I can just abstract that out and make something that plugs in there, but uses object storage. And that's what this merge request does. Um, and one of the really nice things about that is that if you look at this file, which contains a lot of uh, this reader code, which contains a lot of business logic about how we take a request and find a file to serve for that request, it's it's code that grew over time and it's uh, it's not entirely straightforward, but it is very important that we that that keeps working. And the changes in this file are very minimal. Um, so the only, yeah, let's look, if, see if I can find an example. Yeah, so here we used to call file path eval symlinks in a standard library, and now we call eval symlinks in a new symlink package. And uh, what is that? Well, I just copied the file from the Go standard library and I changed it a tiny bit so that it can use a virtual file system that uh, this merge request introduces. And in this diff, you can see how big the changes are, but the changes are really of the type. This used to say os.lstat and now it says fs.lstat. And everything else is just exactly the same uh, as the standard library. So there's this fslstat and then down here there's relink. That's the only things I had to change. Those are the only things I had to change. So, um, yeah, that that's sort of the magic. And I first got that working against the local file system with a simple implementation of the virtual interface. So of the LSTAT and read link, where I just call the real LSTAT and the real read link and the real open. And uh, that kept everything working, including stuff in change routes. So this trick of putting the virtual file system in there doesn't break anything we already had. And then I sat down and created a different implementation that talks to object storage. And that is this file, and this is a substantial file. So looking at a substantial, like the big files, right? Go sum, that is just dependencies. That is um, That happens when you pull in a lot of dependencies. Uh, Simlink Go is big because it's copied from the standard library, like the new lines in there, the lines that I actually changed, uh, changed fewer than 10 lines. Then Blob Go is big, and this main goal up here is big, but I'm going to go there last. So here is uh, Blob Go, which is the um, uh, implementation of that simple file, in, uh, that virtual file interface using object storage. And yeah, it doesn't really make sense for me to talk through this. If you're interested, you should just read it. And one thing I want to point out is that uh, we use a cache for metadata. So the metadata is a struct called attributes, and uh, we use an LRU cache for that. So this only works well if after a deployment, all the paths change. Uh, so if you if something is hosted at public root test pages to slash public, and you deploy them to the same route again, this cache would have to get flushed and that would be bad. Um, but that wouldn't work anyway in object storage. We'd want to have uh, unique URLs for every deployment that uh, would be hidden from the user, but that would automatically make sure we don't serve still uh, things from the cache. So yeah, this thing uses the Go Cloud SDK uh, library to get uh, to, to implement LSTAT and open and read link on top of object storage. Um, yeah, I don't know if I can want to say much about the implementation here. Um, it seems to work. Well, uh, it works, <laughs> I should say. Um, but th this is, yeah, this is some, this is the no one of the non-trivial things that needs to happen here. Uh, so this is, um, that's why this is 300 lines or so because we have to uh, create a, a read seeker to plug into the HTTP library. 
and uh, yeah, we have to do this stuff with attributes and caching. So that's one 300 line file and here at the top is a 150 line file and this is the uploader and um, this I, I made it a sub command because I think we should also be able to delete stuff so we should have a delete sub command as well but for the demo we didn't need that and this does uh, well what you'd expect it opens the zip file and it loops it opens the bucket it loops through the entries and if something is a regular file, it uploads it to object storage. If it's a symlink, it creates a kind of symlink structure that we use for this on object storage. And if it's anything else, we skip it. So um, this is pretty straightforward what this does. And uh, one thing that's interesting to point out is that the symlink code is a bit longer because it has to check for paths that point outside the root. So there's a syntactic check here where we take the target and uh, we see what the target would point to and then if it, if it doesn't start with a prefix, we just skip the skip the thing. So yeah, that's the uploader. So now I think I've talked about all the non-trivial parts. I've talked about the uploader. I've talked about the virtual file system implementation backed by object storage. I've talked about the symlink stuff. And... Um, yeah, here's an example of how little things we had to change, like this method that detects content type used to call OS open, and now we say uh, virtual file system open this path, and that just works the same. I think that's it. Uh, so thank you for watching and listening, and if you have any questions, uh, feel free to write a comment on this merge request. And I'll this video will be posted as a comment on the merge request. Thanks.